good morning and happy Sabbath. Um, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Gitau from Equity Afia Medical Center here in Upper Hill, located at KMA Center. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to stand here again uh, to give a health nugget. We have been having a few health nuggets during these three weeks that we've had the various activities within church. And today I speak of a very interesting topic that at first when I was told, I asked, am I supposed to speak this to Adventists? But I said I will, <laughs> I will do it because all of us are, are affected and this information you can also pass to your, to your family and friends. So today, briefly, we'll talk about sexually transmitted infections. And I'll be very brief, and I do hope we'll have other opportunities to do this in detail. So in terms of definition or what are STIs, um, we have had this in our radio stations. For those who speak Swahili, you've heard of magonjwa yazina, very difficult words. But it's basically any infection as any other in the body that can be caused by either bacteria, viruses, and parasites. And it is transmitted through sexual contact. So for those of us who are married, as long as you are having sexual contact, you are at risk of getting a sexually transmitted infection. And for those who are not and um, are having any form of sexual contact, be it legal or illegal, you are at risk of getting an STI. And even when you come into a union, when you get married to a person who you do not know their history, you're also at risk. So just because two of you are very new and you're newly married does not mean that I might not come into the union with an STI. So it's transmitted also through skin-to-skin -skin contact. So even skin-to-skin -skin contact can transmit such things as herpes and human papilloma virus and also other non-sexual means such as a mother to a child. So you've heard of mother to child transmission of HIV. So also a mother can pass a, a, an STI to a child and also syphilis. Some of them get born with uh, infection of the eye because the mother had an infection. So there are many, there are many STIs. Over 30 known STIs, but there are those common ones which we encounter in the hospitals and this um, are infections such as human papilloma virus where people get genital warts. We have chlamydia, genital herpes, pubic lice. We have gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV, and trichomoniasis. So how would I know that I have a problem? Number one, if you have any sore or bump in the genital or the rectal area, you need to see your doctor's eyes. So if you have any, it's not normal to have bumps or sores or to have an ulcer in your genital area. If you have any painful or burning urination, whether you're a lady or a, or a man, if you have any of these, it's important to see a doctor. When you have a urinary tract infection, you can also get painful urination. So it does not mean that each time you have pain in you, while urinating, you have an STI. It could also be a UTI. If you have any, for the men, if you have any discharge from your, pin, from, your, from your genital area, it is not normal unless that which that comes with sexual contact. Uh, for the ladies, if you notice any changes in your discharge, it is important that you come and see a doctor. So ladies usually have normal discharge, but if you notice any change, is it the smell that has changed? Is it the color? Does it have, look like it has blood? Those are the things that make you want to come and see the doctor. Um, if you have any pain after coitus, so when you're, when katika kitendo chandoa, when you're going in and you, there's pain, it should not be painful. So if there's pain, that might mean that there is a problem. Um, if you notice any swelling around your groin area, like just where the hips meet the abdomen, if you notice there are lymph nodes there, also, it's, a, it's something that needs to get checked out. So, why are we talking about this today? Why do we want to talk about, to you, about this to you today? Is because we have certain complications of you getting STIs. People who get HIV, their risk factors come from exist sometimes, some of them existing STIs. So, when you have an STI, you are at a higher risk of getting HIV. Infertility. 
If you have an untreated STI, it can cause infertility because it causes inflammation of your of your organs which are which are supposed to actually produce children and this goes to both men and women yeah STIs can cause your tubes to to be inflamed and they get blocked eh? both for men and and women so it's important to get treated each time you think there's a problem for the for those uh, for the ladies who are pregnant it can also cause pregnancy complication including miscarriages and it can actually predispose you to certain cancers. Certain cancers have been associated with STIs, such as cervical cancer, which is among the number one cancers here in, in Kenya. So it means that there's a risk that we are not addressing. So to maybe finalize, in terms of um, the message here today is how to prevent ourselves. So we've, we've had... What are these STIs? What they can cause? How would I know I have? And now the bigger message is, how do I protect myself? Number one, abstain is the most effective way. So if you're not married, it is important that you abstain from any sexual contact so that you avoid getting an STI. When you're married, stay with one uninfected partner is very reliable so if the both of you have been screened you have taken care of yourself and both of you are not uh, having other sexual partners it means that you will not get any stis number three wait and test should you get any sti at any point it is important to avoid any other sexual contact until both of you both you who was infected and the other one who was not both of you are tested and now you can initiate and the fourth one is get vaccinated currently we are actually encouraging vaccination against certain types of uh, stis where we have vaccines for instance the human papilloma virus we are starting to vaccinate uh, girls and boys who are below the 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 age of initial sexual contact yeah so anytime from 10 years you can actually have your, your child vaccinated again, human papilloma virus. So even by the time they are an adult, they are not transmitting this thing to other people. In Kenya, currently, we are doing for the girls, but other countries are also doing for the boys because also the boys are the ones who actually uh, also transmit it to other people. And also we have hepatitis B vaccination which is actually pretty important. That's why even for pregnant ladies, we usually check for, for hepatitis B because it's one of those uh, long-standing infections that might not have any symptoms. Above everything, as I conclude, having given the symptoms of an STI, it is very, sometimes it's very difficult for you to know you have an STI because sometimes, especially for ladies, discharge just looks normal. And that's why it's important to have an annual screening test as you do your annual test to ensure that you're safe. And even for those who are pre-wedding, pre the ones who are planning to get married, it is important that you do an STI screen prior to getting married. I wish you all a happy Sabbath.